wanted to share with you one of the wonders of the world, which um, I've come across with bees, which not many people have experienced. I've only experienced it three times in my life, mostly with my father. So you have a swarm. Swarms are when the, the queen, um, come, the fresh queen comes out and she takes all the flying bees and they go up in the air. And, um, and the, no, that's not quite right. That's not quite right. What happens is the queen comes out and will be fertilized by drone. Um, and at that stage, she'll fly off with a lot of the flying bees and you'll see a swarm. And so a beekeeper will go along, pick up this swarm in a box, throw it into a box, cover it up, and then go back to a hive. And this is the wonder of the world, which I've seen is absolutely amazing. Uh, there's probably um, images of this on YouTube. Um, so you go back and you put um, a platform leading up to the hive. The queen is an expert, in, amongst other things, she's an expert at finding dark places to hide. So she'll recognize that there's a hive there, empty hive there. For some reason, perhaps, perhaps scout bees have told her this, yeah, in inverted commas told, um, pheromones and stuff. And the bee will dive into a, a safe, because she's so important, because she's the egg layer. She's so important, she has to find somewhere safe. She goes into the hive, the dark hive. In the old days, it'd be an empty old tree, of course. Um, but if you've laid a board in front of the hive, what happens is the bees are flying around very, very slowly. There's a cloud of bees all around because they're all searching and sniffing for the pheromones for the bee. Yeah. The most incredible thing is you can see all this cloud, it's a mist of these things, you can hardly see anything for bees. And then within a nanosecond, just clicking your, your finger, you'll see them all on this board and all walking up in line like a huge army all together all walking into the into the hive one of the most amazing things i've ever seen and, um, and it's, it's only when yeah. they swarm is it so they have to be swarming for that and then you are you and you capture the queen it's when they yes they've swarmed uh, they've swarmed which is all the bees looking for the new queen um and you you've put the you you've, you've given the opportunity for the queen to get into a hive and then as soon as they detect and smell where she is, and there'll be messages going on from one bee to another, as well as pheromones. And the second it happens, they all start marching into the into the hive really. And I guess in the old days, it would be all marching up a tree together once they've discovered it. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a fascinating sight. The, the fascination is, you know, once they're a cloud, one second they're a cloud, and the next minute they're an organized army just walking into the... <laughs> I, I think it is fascinating with like collective conscience in nature because actually you're probably one of the best people to talk about it. I was watching, I think it was a, it was a BBC programme the other day and there were mm. studies, they were talking about a study in London uh, about coral in Australia and because mm. apparently all the coral of a certain species in the world releases its um, reproductive, some sort of powder or something, isn't it, into, into the ocean. Obviously, because of that means there's more chance of them meeting each other if they all release at the same time. Um, yeah, usually on um, um, uh, when, when it's a full moon. Is that it? Because But then they did the study where they, they put one of them under the, a sink in London. Uh, and within, I think it was within 25 minutes of of um the first one that they noticed in australia uh, and all of them releasing at the same time the, the one in london was doing it as well so there's obviously some sort of uh clock. I don't know, yeah, yeah. Some clock or something it was i think those sorts of things are i think we don't i mean obviously with bees it could be the pheromones and everything like that we don't really you know we know more about but that sort of thing where i mean yeah. although it may not be intelligence it certainly appears that way how much we don't understand about how nature communicates no, I mean, I think we need to be careful about, um, you know, the word intelligence. I think a lot of this is, you know, for example, uh, a lot of this is genetic. You know, uh, a lot of behavior of bees, for example, is absolutely genetic. The cleaning abilities, the ability to fly. Um, it's just like a, a kitten, for example. You can put a kitten on a board with a glass board, with a glass uh, leading to um, it. it its exit. So if you want to get away, you have to go over, over the glass, and it won't do it because it's um it has it, it naturally knows that it's um it's going to fall down even though it's a glass a piece of glass there. So a lot of this is all um it's all fixed by you know coded in DNA, and the environment has some effect on that switching on things, switching switching off. I mean, how does a bird know how to to fly straight from the nest? You know. 
there's no lessons or anything. So yeah, a lot of this yeah. is a lot of it is DNA as opposed to um, the intelligence is a human is, is a human term. I would say a lot of it is just natural um, natural selection has has created codes within the DNA which enables that that organism to do certain things with, with certain switches um, over time. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't know. I mean, I'm not a scientist. That's the problem. I'd like to know all these things, but then it's say putting it down. I always we put it down to sort of natural behaviour. I don't know whether I'd always think what's behind. Surely there must be some discernible characteristic which makes all of these things work. We grow up on the farm, even with things like horses, where they stand up within two minutes and start running around. I mean, obviously that's of you know in the wild that would be a very sensible thing to do, given that you'd be eaten otherwise. But it still fascinates me to think how. How they know how to you know it takes humans two years to learn how to walk and they seem to know how to do it as soon as they pop out which doesn't yeah. seem that fascinating to some people but <laughs> it's not easy to walk yeah. is it if you've done those machine things where you have to try and concentrate uh, and make the figure walk and it's, it's really quite an effort to try and balance all of the the muscles and everything that goes with it if you, if you have to mm. physically concentrate on it well it's um it's millions of years of evolution have led to that really of course you know the, the horses in the past they, some of the horses which haven't got up quick enough have been eaten yeah, so yeah. <laughs> systems aren't there so it's, it's a very straightforward system really if, yeah um, yeah if the systems aren't there to to react to whatever's going on in the environment um and they're not coded in the dna then uh, that dna will be eliminated it's, it's, it's as simple as that, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 